And here is what I want to say publicly for the first time. After the special military operation was launched, also during the talks in Istanbul, the Kyiv representatives reacted quite positively to our proposals. And these proposals had to do, first of all, to guarantee security and interests of Russia. But obviously, peaceful resolution of this crisis was something that the West was not happy with. And they directly instructed to undermine all the agreements after these agreements were reached. More weapons was pumped, were pumped into Ukraine. The gangs of foreign mercenaries and nationalists joined the Ukrainian army. The units trained by the NATO standards and led by the Western instructors joined the fight. At the same time, they increased reprisals against their own citizens in Ukraine. And that started right after the armed coup d'etat in 2014. The policy of intimidation, terror, violence is becoming more and more massive, more and more barbaric. I would like to emphasize that we are aware that most people who live at the territories liberated from the neo-Nazis, first of all, these are historic lands of the new Russia, they do not want to live under Nazi regime. In Zaporozhye, in Kherson, in Lugansk, in Indonesk, they have seen those atrocities performed by neo-Nazis in the areas of the Kharkiv region that they seized. Bandera followers, that Nazi death squad followers, they are killing people, putting them to prison. They are retaliating, torturing civilians in Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, in Zaporozhye and Kherson regions. More than 7.5 million people lived before the military. Before the hostilities, a lot of them had to leave their homes to become refugees, and those who stayed, some five million people, today they have to live under constant shelling and rocket attacks perpetrated by the Nazi soldiers. They are hitting schools and hospitals. They are carrying out terrorist attacks against civilians. We have no right to leave people who are close to us to these torturers. We have to hear their call to define their own future, to define their own fate. Parliaments of the People's Republic of Donbass and military civilian administrations of the Kherson and Zaporozhye regions made a decision about holding referenda on the future of these territories, and they appealed to us, to Russia, with the request to support this step. Once again, we will do everything we can to provide safe conditions to hold this referenda so that the people could express their will and make a decision about their future. And the decision that will be made by the majority of the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, Kherson and Zaporozhye regions, we will support this decision. Friends. Today, our armed forces, as I have said, are fighting along the contact line that exceeds 1,000 kilometers. And they fight not just against the neo-Nazi units, but against the entire military war machine of the collective West. And in this situation, we have to make the following decisions. It is on par with the threats that we are facing, namely, to protect our motherland, its sovereignty and territorial integrity, to ensure safety and security of our people and people living in the liberated areas. I think we should support the suggestion and proposal of the Ministry of Defense and the General Staff about launching partial mobilization in the Russian Federation. Once again, we are talking about the partial mobilization. We will only mobilize those citizens who are currently in the reserve. And first of all, those who have experience, who served in the army, who have certain professions and occupations, and who have necessary competence and experience, those who will be mobilized before they will be sent to their units, they will have additional military training with the experience of the military operation in mind. The decree on the partial mobilization has been signed in accordance with the legislation officially in writing the chambers of the Federal Assembly, the Council of the Federation, the State Duma will be informed on that. 
The mobilization will be launched today on September 21st. I instruct heads of regions to provide all the necessary support in this effort. I would like to emphasize especially that the citizens of Russia who will be mobilized, they will receive status, payments and all the social guarantees that the contracted soldiers have. I would like to add that the decree on partial mobilization also stipulates additional measures on performing the military state contract. The heads of the military industrial enterprises have direct responsibilities to increase the number of material and weapons that they produce to use additional industrial capacities in this effort. In turn, all the matters of material, resource and financial support for these enterprises should be resolved by the government immediately. Friends, in their aggressive anti-Russian policies, the West has crossed all the lines. We keep hearing threats against our country, against our people. Certain irresponsible politicians from the West, they don't just say about their plans to supply long-range assault weapons to Ukraine, systems that would allow them to strike Crimea and other territories of Russia. And such terrorist attacks, also using the Western weapons, have been al already carried out in Belgorod, Kursk regions. They use contemporary systems, aviation, vessels, satellites, strategic UAVs, NATO is performing reconnaissance along the entire south of Russia. In Washington, London, Brussels, they directly push Kyiv to transfer hostilities to our territories. They don't hide it anymore. They say that Russia should be destroyed at the battlefield. And then the political, economical, cultural and all kind of sovereignty should be lifted from the country. Our country should be ransacked. And now they are using nuclear blackmail as well. They are not just promoting Zaporozhye nuclear power station attacks that could lead to the nuclear catastrophe. But some high-level representatives of the leading NATO countries are making statements about the possible use of the nuclear weapons, weapons of mass destructions against Russia. Those who are making these statements towards Russia, I would like to remind them that our country also has various weapons in its possession, and in certain components these weapons are more modern than the Western countries have, and if the territorial integrity of our country is threatened to protect our country and our people, we will absolutely use all the means that we have in our possession. And we are not bluffing. The citizens of Russia can be confident the territorial integrity of our motherland, our independence and freedom will be protected, will be ensured once again by all the means that we have in our possession. And those who try to blackmail us with these weapons, they should know that the wind can change and blow towards them. In our historic tradition, in the destiny of our people, it is to stop those who want to dominate in the world, those who want to enslave our motherland, our country. And now, too, we will do that. That's how it will be. I trust in your support.